Casey and this is Gorgeously Aging and today we're going to be testing out the number one De Chanel foundation and a whole bunch of other new makeup products I have here that I want to test on my mature over 50 skin. So if you're brand new here, I am 51, almost 52 years old and I am passionate about all things skincare and facial rejuvenation but I absolutely love makeup. So you'll see some makeup videos splattered into my content and we're going to jump right into the makeup. So I was really curious about this MAC. This is the Hyper Real Skin Canvas Balm. So we're gonna see how this lays under makeup. I do have dry skin, so I always like a moisturizer or some kind of primer that's hydrating underneath my foundation. I've already done my skincare routine, including some sunscreen. So this is just going to provide some moisture and hydration for the foundation. It seems like this is lightly scented, which I usually don't like, so we'll see how this goes. I want to make sure I get some under the eyes as well. So the Chanel foundation, the number one day Chanel, this is in the shade B40. It is $75, so this is by no means a budget-friendly foundation, but I did want to try it. It has 29 shades, and it's said to be buildable, luminous, and hydrating. So we'll see how this performs on, on my mature skin. I'm just gonna take a couple of pumps here and I'm gonna use this brush. It's a Farah brush. I haven't used this one before. I'm gonna start in the center of the face, the nose, and just work my way out. That tends to be where I need the most coverage and then less around the perimeter of my face. I have used this foundation a couple of times. I do like to test it first before I go on camera and so far I am really enjoying it. The big question is do I like it as much as the Giorgio, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk? And unfortunately, my daughter used the rest of my Luminous Silk, so I just ordered some. So I can do a direct comparison of this foundation and the Armani. Now, I'm usually a very budget-friendly makeup person. I'm just budget, a budget shopper in general. But I do like to try some of the luxury makeup items just to see if there are any that really do perform so much better than drugstore brands. The drugstore brands have come such a long way that you can get incredible makeup at the drugstore. So really two pumps was enough. I think on mature skin, it's really important not to overdo it. Less is more, especially if you're gonna be adding other makeup products. This does come in a really nice heavy glass container and the pump seems to work quite well. So I do like the packaging. It's pretty, it's sophisticated. So there's that. So I'm gonna use the Kat Von D Good Apple Serum concealer and I've got I've had this for a while but only used it like once so I want to give it another try. I like to use a lighter shade just to brighten up the under eyes right here between the brows down the center of the nose the tip of the nose and the corner of the nose here and then we're just going to give a little lift to the face by pulling up from the corners of the mouth upward a little bit of light reflection on the chin and then we're going to blend that all in. I'm going to use that same brush and we're just going to blend. You can pat if you don't want to move it around too much or do light sweeping. I tend to like patting. I feel like it doesn't disturb the foundation as much. I've got the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cosmos palette to show you guys and I really think that's such a pretty fall palette. This is the Hourglass Concealer Brush, which I think is such a nice shape for blending in concealer. Finger will do just fine as well. Sometimes the warmth of the finger is really nice to warm up the concealer. I do like to take a little of that concealer on the eyelid as a primer. And certainly you don't need as much concealer as I've used. I'm going out tonight and so this is gonna be a nighttime look for me. Adam and I are going out to dinner. And so I do wear a little more makeup if I'm going out and it's going to be dark. We're going to a restaurant that I know is kind of dimly lit, but I'm going to add some contouring so it'll bring it all together. So today I'm going to use the Fenty Cream Bronzer and this is in Butter Biscuit. Such a pretty color and so easy to use. And I'm just going to take, this is like an e.l.f. This is an e.l.f. powder blurring and I like to use this for my bronzer. And I'm just going to stipple that. And then once I get most of it off of there, I'm going to kind of come up a little higher. Stippling just seems to blend it out nicely without moving around everything. 
go around the perimeter here of my hairline. I'll be fixing my hair after. Who fixes their hair before and who fixes their hair after makeup? Let me know in the comments. I tend to do my makeup first and then my hair. I kind of feel like if I have to rush out of the house, if there's a fire, I'd rather have my makeup done. I don't know, I've always done that where I do my makeup first and my hair second, but there's no right or wrong way. Contouring on the mature face is so helpful. You can conceal a little bit of a sagging jawline and sagging jowl. And I'm gonna use the NARS Liquid Blush, and this is in the color Dolce Vita. This is such a pretty color. For me, this is like such a nice fall color. It's not so bright pink. For a while, we were seeing such a trend for the super bright pink, and I kind of like it a little more muted. I'm actually gonna use that same brush. Once the brush has some product in, in it, I always feel like it blends things so nicely. Just gonna blend that up toward the hairline, keep it up high and lifted. If you get your blush down too low, if you smile, and put it right there and then you're, it drops, you have blush kind of down in here. So on the aging face, I think it's especially important to keep the blush up a little bit higher. So I did put lashes on this morning. These are the Ardell 420 and they're so delicate. They almost could pass for natural lashes. I think they're so pretty. If you're somebody that wants to try lashes but you don't want them to look too artificial, Ardell 420 is in that natural line, so pretty. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a little bit of the traditional Laura Mercier powder and set my under eyes and just very lightly set the complexion. And on the aging face especially, you don't need a lot of powder. Otherwise it really sets into those fine lines and wrinkles. But this Laura Mercier is so finely milled that it works really nice on aging skin. Well, any skin, but I particularly like it on my aging skin. So I'm gonna focus on the T-zone and then a little sweep under the eyes and on the upper eyelid, on the chin, and then whatever's left on the brush, I'll just kind of sweep it around the face gently. Another thing is I almost always do my complexion first and eyes second. And I know so many people like to do eyes first and complexion second. Let me know in the comments what you prefer. So I don't know if you've ever used this stands out sponge, but it's like a memory foam, foam sponge for the face. This one's a little dirty, it needs a wash, but I do like to press everything in after I've done my complexion. So I do want to use a little bit of powder blush just to set the blush in. This is by ColourPop, and this is an EcoTools Diffused Blush Brush. I like it that it's small enough that I can pick my colors without it getting all over in every color. I don't necessarily like a shimmer on my cheeks. I kind of have been preferring a matte look lately. Sometimes if you put too much shimmer up in here, it can pick up the crow's feet and any kind of texture that you have in your face. I'm gonna mix these two together on the bottom here. Just a pretty peachy color. I think that'll work well with that NARS that we put on there, the Dolce Vita. This is actually, this brush is nice because it's small, but I almost want something to diffuse this a little bit more. I'm gonna take something a little bigger like this and just very gently diffuse that. This brush is one of the older brushes in my collection. It's, I believe, from Beauty Junkie, an Amazon kit. If I can find the link, I will put it in the description because these brushes have held up so nice. And then again, you can pat in a little bit here. I'm gonna use a Milani brow pencil here and just give my brows a little oomph. So I'm just gonna go in and just do a little upward hair stroking just to give my brow a little bit more definition. This is such a precise brow pencil. I really, really like it. So as I start to get towards the midsection of the brow, I'm gonna kind of go over in a diagonal kind of upward. And then start to, from the peak or the arch of the brow here, I'm gonna kind of come down, make a little downward strokes. Then I'm gonna take the Grande Brow, and this is the Tinted Brow Gel and Brow Enhancing Serum. So it's your brow gel and a brow hair growth serum all in one. And I'm just gonna run that just along the actual hairs, trying not to get it all over the skin. And so you can see the difference between the two brows. It just lifts everything up. I'll do the other brow and I'll be right back. Okay, the fun part, you guys, I love doing eyeshadow. This is the Cosmos Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I have to say that her palettes are some of the best palettes I've ever used. 
I have quite a little collection of ABH palettes I should show you sometime because I have some really old school palettes by Anastasia and this one is just so beautiful. So I'm going to use some of the more fall colors like these two here and then this one, mostly the bottom row with the exception of that. I'm probably not going to use that. So I'm going to start out with a big fluffy brush and I'm going to take this lightest color as a transition. And we're just going to go above the natural crease back and forth and this will help lift a hooded brow or a hooded lid. We want to keep everything uplifted. And if we put too many dark colors way down into the crease down here, it's going to drag everything down. So we always want to go above that natural crease, especially as we age. This is the Morphe by Ariel brush set, and I really do like this set. It's pretty cost effective. I'll list it down below, but I do reach for these a lot. Now this is from that same collection, but it's a little bit smaller, still fluffy and diffused, but not quite as big as that first one that I used. I'm going to go into this color right here, and I'm just going to go above the natural crease there and just build that up with a little more depth and it's nice when you have a nicely diffused soft brush because it does really help with the blending. If the brush is too firm it really doesn't get a good diffused blend. And then I like to take what's left on the brush and periodically just sweep upwards. Now we're going to move down to this deep burgundy color. I'm going to take from that same brush collection. This one is a little bit more dense. Um, it's soft but you can see it's not as flared out. It's got a little bit of an oval shape and I'm just going to go ahead and create a V shape and we're going to go above the natural crease. Keeping the color on the outside and as we get that color off the brush we're going to move toward the inner eyelid. Then we're going to go back to another one of our fluffy brushes. Little circular motions very lightly diffuse that product. I'm going to take a smaller brush like this and I'm going to go back into those last two colors, this one and this one, and run some pigment under my lower lash line. This is a Sonia Kashuk brush, and I really like her brush sets from Target as well. She has some nice brushes, and they're really quite affordable. I'm just deepening this up a little bit here, and then I'll blend it. And I'm going to go back and just kind of tap that in a bit. I'm going to go into this beautiful color called Sun. Let me show you this. Because I'm going out tonight, I may as well put a little bit of sheen on my eyelid. Oh, that's beautiful. Can you guys see that? It's so pretty. It's like a gold, but it almost in the right light, you can see some pink. And I'm just going to take this brush and just diffuse that a little bit. All right, you guys, something I stumbled upon, which I think is fantastic for lash deficient people who have really tiny lashes, is this Clinique Mascara. Look at how cute and tiny the wand is. It makes getting those lower lashes so easy. And for those of us in our 50s and we don't see well, it does make getting those lower lashes so much easier. So I do want to use this Anastasia Beverly Hills Pro Pencil and just give a little bit of highlight to underneath my brow. And I'll just take my finger and press that in. I have this beautiful Dew Wet Balm. This is by Danessa Myrick. I was introduced to her products like a year ago and they're so pretty. So I'm just gonna pat some of that on my cheek and then use my sponge to press it in. Yeah, look at how pretty that is. I like to put some on the tip of my nose and this would be pretty even if you don't wear makeup just to put some on the high points of your cheeks. It's not really glittery, it just has the most beautiful sheen. I'm actually gonna take a Q-tip into this and put some in the corners of my eyes. Like a little inner corner highlight that won't pick up the texture or the wrinkles there because it is a cream product. So I usually like a little bit of a nose contour. So I'm going to take the Too Faced. This is the Chocolate Soleil Matte. And this is a nice color for a nose contour. So I'm going to take a smaller angled brush and just get a little contour here. Completely unnecessary, but once you start doing it, you notice the difference and you keep doing it. It's such a subtle difference, but I really enjoy it. I like to come from my eyebrow down the side of the nose and then just kind of blend it downward keeping that center of the nose a little more highlighted. I want to show you guys another new favorite of mine. I drug my feet on buying this for so long and I'm so glad I finally did. This is the Lancome Edol Eyeliner. It's waterproof and the tip is like perfection. It's not very often I get excited about eyeliners. <laughs> 
usually get excited about eye eyeshadow palettes and lipsticks, but this eyeliner is so good. So I like to get just underneath here to connect the end of the lash line to the inner corner. And then I'm just gonna lightly do a tight line. And I like doing tight lines with a liquid liner. I just feel like it's more precise and crisp, but certainly whatever works for you. And I'm just gonna take and flick up or down, whatever works, tiny wing, and repeat that on this side. Get the tight line in there. A magnifying mirror helps. Get this inner corner going and then a tiny wing and we're going to connect that to the lash line here. I'm just going to go ahead and very close to the lash. I'm looking into a mirror that's not magnified and I really want my magnifying mirror. This is so good and it stays on so well. All right, so I'm just going to take a look here. I feel like this needs a little more of a blend, an upward pull. We're going to create that upward movement. The shimmer is a little more intense than I really like typically, but it'll settle in. It's gonna be an hour or two, a couple hours before I go out to dinner. So I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Liner in Mocha, and I do have some lip balm on, so I want to remove that. So the liner and the lipstick have a little something to grip to, otherwise it's so slippery. Anchoring your pinky is helpful. Let me just swatch this color so you guys can see, because it's hard to see when it's going on the lips. It's actually a really pretty color. When you think of mocha, I think more brown, but it's it's a nude, but it's got a little pink to it. And this is the Artist Couture lipstick and the color Adore Me. So I'm just going to swatch that. Such a pretty color for fall. I wish my lips weren't so dry, but it is what it is. And to create an ombre lip, I'm going to take just a tiny bit of the concealer that I used, just the tiniest bit. just in the center and I'm going to take a small little brush and then I'm going to use the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. I usually take a second when I'm all done with my makeup and just take a look and see what am I missing or what do I need and I always like to use a nude pencil in the waterline especially at night and I feel like I need just a little bit more of the powder bronzer. Often I find that if you do a cream bronzer and then set it with a powder bronzer, it just lasts so much nicer. And I normally wouldn't have this heavy of makeup, but for going out at night, I kind of like it. And then I'm also just gonna reinforce this jawline contour. I know I already set it, but that's okay. You can always go back in and make some changes. All right, guys, here's the makeup look for going out with Adam tonight. Let me know what you think. If you've used any of these products, let me know how they're working for you. I'm absolutely loving the Cosmos palette. It's my newest obsession and so many other good things here. I will say I do really like the Chanel foundation. I'm not sure if it's worth $75 though because I do think the Luminous Silk is so good. So when I get the Luminous Silk in, I'll do a head-to-head -head comparison this against my Armani Luminous Silk. For those of you who are more budget conscious, like I am typically, I do have a bunch of drugstore foundations that I think are incredible. So I'll do a best of drugstore foundations for mature skin here in the next couple of weeks, but there's one that I reach for almost as much as the high-end foundations that I have. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I will see you in my next video.